All right, guys, the best four pro tips I have for you for living your best prep life, and it doesn't include EDC. We'll get into that and more. First, let's talk about the week. Just got back from Moab, Utah, doing content for Phil Craft Survival's main page. If you didn't know, we're actually on Twitter now. I'm taking these videos and uploading them to Twitter. It's at Mike A. Glover 1. I did a video with Rich Larson, a hard enduro rider. You're probably asking yourself, what the hell does hard enduro riding have to do with preparedness? It has everything to do with preparedness. Because the more I can get you to recreate, build technical skill sets outside of just the idea of being prepared, the best prepared you'll be. You see, when I was in the military, we often did things with subject matter experts, like rally race car school, motorcycle driving. I even did a concept to hire a guy who did parkour to teach us how to efficiently and ergonomically move our bodies for building climbing. Like parkour? Yeah, parkour. Rich Larson, a pro hard enduro rider, doing content as a knowledge transfer to you on the Philcraft Survival Channel, which we got our channel back after a year of YouTube jail. The more that you could do that, the more you could be inspired to go, I don't know, technically ride, build fundamentals. We put Kyle Cooper, backcountry adventure moto, really an expert at his craft, and Greg Lappin, who's an intermediate rider, and also the professor and black belt at Philcraft Jiu-Jitsu, we put them head-to-head -head in challenges. You guys could check that out on Rich Larson's YouTube page with all things education, as well as our Philcraft Survival channel. Also, I want to say a big shout-out to you guys for making this a top 100 book on Amazon again. If it wasn't for you and your support, I wouldn't be able to do this in the first place. You also got us to sell over 100,000 copies because of your support which led us to a new book deal. A new book is going to be on tribe, building community. It actually stems from my experience in teaching rewilding with my team across the country. We are teaching next weekend rewilding in South Carolina at Bert Soren of Sornex and Sornex Outdoors on his personal farm. If interested, I added two more slots. You could find them down below. Lastly, our most recent video on this channel where we had two civilians that were veterans that saved these law enforcement officers, we did find out that both of them were recognized for their courageous efforts in saving those law enforcement officers. It's one of the reasons why we teach personal defense, not only what to do before and on the X, but also what happens after. Luckily for these guys, they were co-located with the officers who are witnesses to everything that went down. If you're not training for personal defense and understanding what happens after, you should. It's why we're advocates for USCCA, which is so important nowadays because it depends on where you're at and the politics that are involved on how you're going to be judged and potentially prosecuted using self-defense, your inherent right. In Texas recently, a man who I thought was a clear-cut case of self-defense was just charged and sentenced to 25 years. I've been a member of USCCA for three years now, and I'm not taking the chance. And also they offer an offering of everything from survival, personal defense, and what to do during and after a self-defense act. Guys, you can find the link down below, uscca.com forward slash Philcraft. All right, the top four things. Let's focus on this because these are the top four habits I recommend that you implement in your life that are going to make you best prepared. It doesn't include EDC. Remember, this is the brick and mortar you lay out as the foundation before you start stacking all the personal defense, all the technical skills. Number one, build a timeline. Every single day that you wake up, build a timeline. Take your hard times. Let's say you pick up your kids from school at 1600. Well, that's your hard time. Backwards plan to achieve all your goals by the hour on a schedule. Make a very specific timeline and all the things that you're going to accomplish and stay on course. Because when you do that, imagine you have like a line out of mason jars and you're investing in your life. If you wake up and you just send it, you're hoping for random acts of success, then you're basically just throwing coins at the jars. You're not deliberately putting them into each jar. You're just chucking them. It's like the jars at a county fair where you got to throw something inside the jar where you didn't know this, but the top of the jar is really small. And the object you're throwing is really big. That's my analogy, at least. Because if you're deliberately doing, you're placing and allocating a bit of your time into each jar. Say, for example, you want to be more physically fit. 
Well, you would place those coins in that jar specifically, allocating very specific time. Let's say you want to be a better mechanic. So you spend 30 minutes to an hour every single day doing mechanic stuff, working on cars and your bikes. Well, you put a little bit in that jar. Let's say you want to get educated on the Phil Craft Survival app and do an education. Well, then you're allocating an hour to education and you put a little bit in that jar. When you do that over time, you're building up and getting a huge return on your investment by allocating your time accordingly. Not doing that, you're setting yourself up for failure. So on a timeline, set the hard time backwards plan. Why do you do that? Well, because if you start planning from the onset of you waking up, then you might not have enough time in the day via your priorities. So set out your priorities, create your hard time, and start stacking everything so you can allocate enough time. And if you backwards plan all the way to the beginning of the day, you might have to get up an hour early. Or you actually might be able to sleep in an hour later because you're achieving all your goals. It's the most efficient and effective way to live your life. Number two, meditate. And yeah, I mean meditate. I mean, a lot of you are putting coins in your jars for physical fitness and you're focused on your body, but you're not focused on your mind. And you need mental hygiene. If you're brushing your teeth every single day, you should be meditating every single day. What's the benefit of meditation? Well, one, serotonin is released in alpha and theta activities like deep breathing and visualization. If you visualize and you're quieting your mind and you're relaxing your body, then you're getting these alpha and theta waves, which is benefiting your mental health. You need the mental hygiene to strike the balance. A lot of us like to focus on all the things we're going to do. I want you to strike the balance and focus on the things that you're not going to do and allocating time for meditation every single day. Trust me, this is a mental health necessity in everybody's life. Number three, sleep, burn it down, eat, and repeat. It's a vicious cycle of discipline that optimizes your health, makes your life more efficient. You should do the same exact thing. Like splurge, have your day where you eat fat cake, you just do you, but also have six primary days where you're focused. You have the discipline and it starts with sleep. A lot of you don't put sleep as a number one priority because you got a lot of focus on other things that you have to do, that you have to action. And believe it or not, sleep requires a lot of action, a lot of protocol, like not drinking excessive caffeine during the day, like not scrolling TikTok right before you go to bed, like preparing yourself for sleep. I take CBD and CBN every single day from Wolf 21. It's the cannabinoids that help facilitate sleep for me and help me relax. That facilitates 80s, 85s, even a 95 sleep score on my Garmin as I'm tracking my sleep. Do more to sleep better. If you do that, you're going to optimize your day. The degradation of sleep over time lends itself to issues like alcohol would. If you drink excessive amounts over time again and again and again, it's going to create bad decision making. It's going to lead to something catastrophic happening in your life. It's the same thing associated with sleep. Bad decisions, not optimizing your day for success. Also, high intensity interval training. A lot of people go to the gym and they spend 30 minutes to an hour on a treadmill, conditioning themselves in a fat burning zone for burning fat. I want you to think about working out as feeling like you've earned it every single day. So before you go to bed, you want to be like physically exhausted where you sink into yourself because you burned it down. So high intensity interval training is also good for you because it's about what your body does post hit training. Because post hit training, my body's trying to recover at an elevated heart rate and I'm burning calories. I've raised my metabolism and I'm getting all the benefits post the workout in my recovery. You don't get that when you just sit on a treadmill comfortably for 60 minutes, burning a few hundred calories. So make sure you burn it down, add cardiovascular fitness and add high intensity training to your routine. Eat well. What do I mean by eating well? It's simple. Eat natural whole foods. If it is in a can, if it's in a cardboard box, it's likely full of preservatives and not healthy for you. What I eat, Wagyu steer that we raised ourselves, elk, mule deer, the list goes on. It's all natural. And those natural things are going to lend itself to a healthy lifestyle. There are plenty of fad diets to go around. Just simply eat well by eating naturally. 
if it doesn't come out of the earth or if it's not an animal that eats from the earth, then it's probably not good for you. And lastly, repeat the cycle because that repeating of the cycle, staying on routine, adding those elements into your daily timeline are going to optimize your life. Last but not least, number four, purge all your vices. Yeah, this is a tough one. Alcohol is like the one thing where at a social gathering, if somebody says, oh, I'm not having a drink, they're like, well, what's wrong with you? Like if you were passing around a meth pipe and somebody didn't hit the meth pipe, you wouldn't say what's wrong with you. You'd be like, yeah, you're smart. You're the guy who doesn't smoke meth. So not drinking alcohol. I don't mean don't drink alcohol completely. I mean, I partake. I like a bourbon on a rock. I'm a social drinker. I like being around people and having a beer or two, but I will never drink to get intoxicated. So a vice is all the habits that basically give you no return on investment. And most will say, you know, yeah, but it's, I like it. Yeah, we like a lot of things. But if you want to live healthy and well and more optimized to live your best prep life, then you're going to pay attention by optimizing your life. And splurge when you want. You go to Cancun, yeah, do you. But try to live a routine of discipline. So a vice would be TikTok. You spend three, four hours, which is about the average, on TikTok scrolling aimlessly. Ask yourself, what is it doing for me? Am I getting a return on this investment? You know, take that and allocate it somewhere else, like getting education on YouTube, going to spend time with your family, walking, jogging, anything active. These things are good vices. The bad vice is the empty calorie that's not giving you a return. And I know a lot of people hate it. Like they don't want to be told like, hey, drinking's bad for you, man. Like you drink a lot or you eat like crap. You know, so people who love you, it's why we talk about the sum of five. Like the five closest people that actually care about you, they're going to tell you the truth. They're going to tell you, like, Mike, you're not being a good person. Like, you shouldn't drink excessive amounts of alcohol. Like, why are you doing that to yourself? So keep those five people that are going to tell you the truth and also surround yourself with people who have good habits. Taking positive vices and replacing them with negative vices that are grossly impacting their lives. Guys, I appreciate you. I'm headed off to the underground. I think these things are the fundamentals. I'm going to break it down a little bit more uncensored, doing all the things on the underground that I basically can't do here. One of the reasons why I diversify across different platforms. I appreciate all the support I get on patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. It's linked down below. Peace out. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good week.